Today I'm sharing lots of ways to get different looks from a pair of cover plates, but I also want to talk a bit about some of the design decisions I made while making the cards. Even with the same tools, we'll all make different decisions about materials, colors, techniques, positioning, and I thought it would be fun to talk a bit about that. Let's get started. I'm using these two separate but coordinating cover plate dies from Catherine Pooler. You could get similar looks for most of my cards with any plaid type cover plates, or a plaid stencil, or maybe even a stamp. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a few of each of them, and I'll keep the little offcut shapes in a pile as well, because I'm going to use them a bit later. I'm cutting mine from cardstock panels I've already cut, and that meant if I didn't center it exactly right, sometimes I would get a narrower frame on one side of the die cut. If you want to be sure to get the full A2 size die cut, maybe start with slightly larger panels. My color combination for today is full of bright summer colors and this one quite dark purple. While the contrast adds a ton of visual interest, it can easily overwhelm if the balance is out of whack. I'll show you an example of that in a minute. The first thing to talk about is the almost endless ways you can combine these two die cuts. You can use them separately or you can stack them up with either one of them on top. The look is similar but with the bigger diamonds on top, maybe you have a better spot to put a sentiment. You can also stack two of the same die cut together. You have to shift one so that the diamonds are offset, so you won't get a full panel, but you can get a pretty wide strip that could go down or across the center of your card. And we haven't even talked about adding color yet. This would be a beautiful design all in white, but I stacked up the two die cuts over top of a panel that I had swiped all my colors onto. This was one of the ones I didn't get the full frame with, so I just trimmed the die cuts and the panel so that my edges are clean and lined up perfectly. Okay, so now let's add some color. I grabbed one of the die cuts in my little media mat, which I find has just enough grip when I'm blending ink onto die cuts. I started with Lime Ricky ink and I really got going before I remembered that my intention was to actually use this die cut as a stencil and blend ink through onto another panel for a two for one. I stopped, got the panel, and then put another layer of green ink down. Then I cleaned the mat so I wouldn't be picking up green ink as I blended down my yellow ink just below it. This is why I usually start with yellow, or whatever my lightest ink is, just to keep it as pure as possible. I moved on to Tiki Torch and finally Coral Cabana on this panel for a nice citrusy look. Since I have seven colors in my palette today, I repeated the coral on the second set. This ink pad is really nice and juicy, and that definitely makes ink blending easier. You can see immediately as I move to my Pucker Up ink that my ink pad is thirsty, and it takes me quite a bit longer to get the coverage I'm looking for. This is exactly why I recommend that you get the ink refills if you like to do a lot of ink blending or watercoloring or directed paper techniques. So now I have two two-for-one berry colored panels and it was at this point that I remembered I had actually planned to use the same panel underneath for ink blending so I would get all the colors on it. No worries, another great tip for getting good ink blending results is to layer up your inks. So I mixed and matched and blended the opposite colors onto each blended panel. I started with the citrus dye over the berry panel and I blended my colors through again. I put the green ink over the coral background so that I wouldn't end up with the coral in the same place on the blended panel. But then when I did the berry die cut over the citrus panel, I did put the two corals together. And when I was finished all that, I ended up with two similar but not quite the same blended panels. And of course my two die cuts. And depending on which is on top, you get a different look. In the end, I put the berry die cut over the citrus die cut, and I think that might have been a mistake, because that glam ink is really dark, and having the citrus die cut over top would have broken it up a bit better. For the two stenciled panels, my color balance was a little better, just enough of that glam ink to add some contrast, and again, you can see the different looks I got by changing whether I put the coral ink from both layers together or separately. I used my Essential Shapes dies from Ellen Hudson to add some negative frames to draw the eye into my stacked up die cut sentiments. On all my cards today I used Inca Gold cardstock from Tonic for my stacked up die cut sentiments. It's a satiny gold with an iridescent shine in it and it almost glows in real life. My crafty Meraki Enchanted Forest gems match it almost perfectly. Again, a gold base with a pink and green flash in the light. So pretty. Of course, every time I cut those two cover plates, I got all the off-cut diamond and triangle shapes. And in this card, I'm going to use a few of them up with a simple inking technique that adds a ton of dimension with no extra layers. 
I'm using the larger diamond offcuts to build a panel here, and once I've got the right number, I tried to figure out a way to add the color so that I had them randomly spaced all over the panel. I added the ink by pressing each piece into my now well-inked ink pads. This is pretty messy, and I had a cloth nearby to help me keep my fingers as clean as possible, and I managed to get them all done without any smudges. I played with the arrangement a bit to be sure I was happy with the spacing, and then I took a picture of it so I would remember. Then I separated the pieces by color to make the next process more efficient, and I masked off half of each diamond with post-it tape, and I used a sponge dauber to add another layer of ink. These inks layer up like this and give you a darker look, and that makes these diamonds look like they're folded a bit and have a shadow on one side. It takes a bit of time, but it's so easy, and it really adds so much interest. I finished all the diamonds, and then I used my picture to put them all back in place. See what I mean about that dimension? It's pretty cool, right? Next, I added adhesive to a piece of scrap paper and I started placing my diamonds on it so I would be able to work with one panel rather than however many pieces there are here. Then I started playing with the smaller diamond offcuts from the other panel. Again, there are so many ways you could use them depending on how you want to place them, how many of them you want to use, and whether you want to leave them white or add some color. I ended up adding color to them, and I placed them sideways across the center of the larger diamonds. I think this has a really fun mid-century modern look, with a modern color palette. I cut a negative rectangle frame from the background panel, and I added a stacked up die cut sentiment and gems. As I was playing with these diamond shapes, I was reminded of the little Spellbinders color block diamond die I have. I pulled it out, and I was thrilled to see that the diamond was the same size as the cover plate. I started by coloring some strips of cardstock from my scrap drawer with the seven colors of ink, again by just pressing the cardstock onto the ink pads. Then I cut the diamond shapes two times from each color, making sure I didn't lose any of the tiny bits, especially those little centers. At this point, I could have masked off half of each diamond shape and added more ink like I did with the solid diamonds earlier and like I did with these cards a few weeks ago, but I felt like there was already going to be a lot going on once I layered everything up. Then I started assembling. Immediately, I realized that the diamonds were not actually the exact same size, but they were very, very close, with the diamonds on the die cut panel being ever so slightly bigger than the largest outline. I went ahead and used them all, trying my best to leave an even amount of white edge around. I knew that by leaving my smaller diamond die cut and my card base white, your eye would never notice that tiny extra bit. But after I finished, I realized another alternative would have been to not use the biggest outline and just put the smaller diamonds on, leaving a white edge around each diamond. To finish this one, I stacked up the large diamond panel over the smaller diamond panel. I used some of the extra little diamond pieces in the centers of the white areas. Then another stacked up sentiment and more gems finished this one off. Layering, stenciling, using the offcuts, even matching them up with other things we may already have. Cover plates are definitely an investment, and having strategies for getting more from them helps to make sure we get the best value. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time!